Hello, I am Jane Cameron, and welcome to this edition of Flashback, focusing on the Huntington Beach Public Library System in 1995. Our Huntington Beach Public Library has been providing library and cultural services to our community since 1909. On this episode of Flashback, I met with Library Director Ron Hayden, who has since retired in 2008 after 23 years as director. In addition to the recently completed library expansion of 1994, we discussed the many resources available through the library system. A video within this video shows mascot Rita riding on the book conveyor system, explaining how the book return and retrieval process works within Central Library. We also visited Central Library's art gallery, the 13,000 volume collection of genealogy materials, and the reference sections for career, law, and medicine. A visit to the Main Street Library showed how the branch libraries are an important resource to local neighborhoods. Since this 1995 video, significant changes have occurred in the library system which have benefited the community. The late 1900s and early 2000s saw the emergence of a virtual web-based database. With help from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the library embraced the information age by providing computer labs with free internet access. In 2005, a significant computer upgrade was completed, which resulted in free wireless internet, online renewals and reserves, and web-based used book sales. For over 114 years, our Huntington Beach library system has empowered and enriched our community by providing innovative and traditional library services that inspire and encourage transformation and growth. We hope you enjoy this edition of Flashback. Hello and welcome again to Inside City Hall. My name is Jane Cameron and we're again at the Huntington Beach Central Library with the Director of Library Services, Ron Hayden. Ron, I know there's been a lot of uh, promotion and talk about the new wing of the library, but today we're going to talk about actual the main focus of the library, which is all the books that we have behind us. Just how many books does the Huntington Beach Central Library have in its possession? Well, to answer you uh, directly, it's about 350,000 volumes in the entire system. But um, in, in general, I'd also like to comment what, uh, what you just said, is that many times people um, talk about the expansion. Okay. And we don't want to lose sight of the, the, the importance and the basic core uh, justification for a library is its collection. Absolutely. So we have, uh, as I said, 350,000 volumes of books. Uh, over 650 periodicals, magazines, uh, 20 newspapers, uh, databases. I mean, the resources are uh, mind-boggling. And, and so what I really wanted to do is spend some time with you in the existing library and talk about some of the resources that people may not realize that are available to them. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past several years, Huntington Beach has been hit in the budget with cuts and holding back money and such. I'm sure the library must have been affected to some extent, but exactly how? Well, yes, we have. Uh, we've reduced our uh, staff by about 15 percent, and we've cut, unfortunately, our book budget by about 50 percent. So. 
we have uh, unfortunately been unable to purchase as many books as the community needs and as we would like to purchase. So what we are doing now that the expansion is completed uh, is focusing very, very um, diligently on building the library collection with books. So our main focus now is to rebuild the collection and now that we have the space, make it a, a collection um, as it should be for this community. Well, the budget, I'm sure, for Huntington Beach is pretty much set the way it is. So how does the library draw on funds or on books in order to increase the amount that you have or replace those that have been damaged? Well, first of all, the majority of the funds uh, come from the general fund of budget, but uh, in addition to that, we have library support groups who have programs which generate revenue and go directly back to purchasing books. In fact, uh, right behind us here uh, is a program sponsored by the Friends of the Library, and it's a, a book sale, and they have ongoing book sales, they have uh, semi-annual book sales, and uh, these books are donated by the community uh, and they're evaluated by our librarians and if we can't use them the friends sell them and all the money that's generated from the sales go back to the library to buy more books. That's great. I'm sure with different types of donations you must get some books that are pretty nice. Do you put those out here or do you have a special place for those? We put those in a uh, special collection it's, and uh, it's called the silent auction collection and what's really unique about this is there's uh, very rare books or specialized books that are a little bit different from the popular ones out here and we give people an opportunity to bid on them. For instance, uh, right now we have on Civil War, uh, there's a 10 volume collection of rare photographs uh, from the Civil War. Uh, and so those people who are very interested in the Civil War can outbid each other to get um, the, the books, take them home and use them in their library. That's great. Now with all the books that you've discussed, those that are here for the sale and for the auction, plus the unbelievable amount that you have in the library, how many man hours must it take in order to put everything back where it belongs? Lots. <laughs> and because that is our uh, central uh, function, if you will, as a library, that circulating material, what we have developed uh, through a lot of um, hard work and uh, experimenting is a book conveyor system. And I think as an example of our staff's uh, uh, creativity, what I'd like to do is show you a video by Bill Miller, one of our staff members here, who has completely um, videotaped the process and I think made it entertaining in terms of understanding this complex system that we developed. Now is this a, a video that children can, can understand as well? In fact, we do show this at our uh, uh, Storytime Theater uh, in various school tours. So yes, he has a little twist with our mascot Rita uh, riding on the belt and so on. So that it is very technical, but uh, he wanted to develop it in a um, manner in which just about everyone could understand and hopefully appreciate. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing things that no one else gets to see on a normal basis. That's right. Great. Let's take a look at it now. Once upon a time, at a very big library not far away, the people who lived there decided to make it bigger and better. And where they once pushed, pulled, and tugged their books wherever they went, they decided that now they were tired. Let the books come to us, they shouted. And as quick as you can say, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, the books did come. They didn't walk. They didn't fly. They rode. They rode? Yes, they rode on a conveyor belt. Rita heard of this belt, and one sunny day, that rascally sea serpent said, Show me this belt. No one has seen a conveyor in a library. No one in the whole wide world. Let me see this belt. We will come too, said Rita's friends. So off to the library they went. Who knows about this conveyor belt, asked Rita at the friendly reception desk. 
George, said the smiling lady. George, the conveyor brain. He lives in a secret room in the bottom of the library. Then I will talk to George, said Rita. And off he went. Rita found the secret room. It was small and noisy. I don't see a brain or even a George in here, said Rita. Maybe he's in here, said Rusty as he opened the door. I am here, said George. Up here, look up. Those are my control circuits. We came to find out about your conveyor, said Rita timidly. Certainly, said George. I will tell you everything, Rita. Look here. The conveyor belt is really two separate belts, one for adult books and one for children's. People put books in the outside book drop or in the inside book drop, no matter. The books ride the belt. The adult books go to adult pre-shoving. Children's books, of course, to children's pre-shoving. It's a very long, long trip. The books like the ride, and the humans aren't as tired anymore. Come, let me show you. Let me return my book, said Rita. First, at the drive-up book drop outside. One book at a time, Rita. And then, at the inside book drop. Hey, that's easy and fun. But where did they go? First, they must slide down shiny metal chutes, said George. They slide down, down, until they find the belt. Then they ride. Whee, said Rita. Be careful, you rascally sea serpent, scolded George. Conveyors can be very dangerous. I'm sorry, said Rita sadly. I'll be careful. Rita rode and rode and rode and rode. What's that? asked Rita. My electric eye. If too many books get together, my eye turns the conveyor off so they don't get hurt. Oh, look at the silver roller, said wide-eyed Rita. That's the accumulator, said George. Ashy, ashy, ashy. Accumulator. Those wire gates above the rollers separate the books, allowing just one book at a time. It's safer that way. Why do they go clang, clang, clang? The gates have weights on them to keep bad books from turning the gates over and stopping the belt. <laughs> Sounds like a train, said Rusty. Careful, Rusty. Those micro switches tell the gates when to open. Don't break them. Rita rode some more. What's that axe doing there? asked Rusty. That's not just an axe, Rusty. It's a laser beam. From those lasers up there. Every book in the library has a barcode and a sort code. My lasers look at these codes and tell me which bin to put the book in. Here, I'll show you. Now the book travels along the belt. When my laser reads the barcode, it sends it to me, so I can tell the library computer to check the book in. When the laser sends the sort code, I can tell the correct diverter to divert the book into the proper bin. Diverter? It's a pusher of sorts, said George, like this. Don't get too close, Rita. Oh! Will you be a good sea serpent, please? Yes. But what makes the diverter work? 
Air? Lots of air. Pneumatics, we call it. My compressor blows air all day and most of the night. What happens to these books at the end? Asked Rusty. The lasers didn't read both the sort code and the barcode. Humans check them in manually. Rough sort them in pre-shelving. Then take them to the stacks to be shelved. But what if there's trouble? Asked Rita. You can push that red button by Rusty. Oh, Rita, go ahead, pull that emergency cord. The belt stops instantly. Just start it up again when the trouble's over. Just turn a key. Well, I've got to be going now. I've shown you everything. Thanks, George. Yeah, thanks. As Rita checked out some books, the rascally sea serpent was very, very happy. There was a conveyor in a library, and it was Rita's library. And Rita had seen it all. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Ron, seeing that video about the conveyor system is such a technical aspect of the library. It's unbelievable that you have something like that in, in a building of books. Yes, and not only uh, do we have uh, the conveyor system, which you're right, is technical, we have on the other end of the spectrum uh, an area that is completely artistic. And this uh, particular uh, gallery is sponsored by the Arts Associates. Mm -hmm. And it is a space in which local artists can exhibit their works, watercolors, oils, uh, sculptures, ceramics. and because we have about 5,000 people a day visiting us, it's a very good opportunity to show their work and also give the people uh, an opportunity to experience art. So we not only have this space, we're also expanding uh, the galleries to include the Huntington Beach Art League. So as people come to the library to get their books, to see a play, to uh, educate their children, uh, they can also come within the library and see exhibits of art. Let's bring it back to books, though. This is unbelievable and very beautiful. But libraries, to me, um, bring in that sense of history. Do you have any department or division within the library that really hits home the idea of having that historical presence that is available in books? I'm glad you asked, Jane. We went from technical to artistic, and now I think we need to go to the historic. We have a 13,000 volume collection of genealogy materials. And what I'd like to do is show you that collection and tell you a little bit about how we operate the genealogical collection. Okay, if you lead the way, I'll follow. Let's go. This is a very large collection. Is it unusual for a city library to have a collection as large as this? Well, it's almost uh, unheard of in that there are over 12,000 volumes of genealogical material here. So for uh, a city library to have that much information in one area is amazing. How does it compare to maybe what other libraries in the area have to offer? They normally have uh, one or two shelves, not a whole collection with uh, uh, varieties of um, census records, birth, death, marriage, um, uh, ship records as people coming over. Uh, uh, there's also church records. In fact, I, I pulled a couple. Yeah, I saw um, you grab those off the shelf. Yeah, and as a, there are uh, some areas across the country uh, that 
did not have uh, accurate means of recording the record, so others have actually gone into their uh, cemeteries and performed rubbings. In fact, I have one here, The Shadows of the Past. It's tombstone inscriptions in Tulsa County, Oklahoma, volume two, nonetheless. Uh, so they're very specific, and uh, I know this one would interest you, um, Pocahontas and her descendants. Absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I haven't looked to see if your name's in here yet, but uh, <laughs> for those, in fact, are, who are interested in Pocahontas, there's actually a quarterly newsletter. So the type of information here is, is really mind-boggling, and we would have to do a whole show just entirely on this collection, but it is maintained by the Orange County Genealogical Society. Uh, we help them purchase the books. Uh, they maintain our collection for us, and uh, they have monthly meetings here. Uh, and they do offer assistance for those people who are interested in the uh, process of discovering more about their family histories. Now, if you have a reference selection such as this that is just beyond the standards of what is uh, normal for other libraries, then you must have other areas of reference in the library that uh, I'm sure are just as comparable. Right. What I'd like to do now is show you our reference collection. Actually, have Mr. Thad Phillips, our library services manager, do that and show you the wide range of business, legal, and database services that we offer in the reference section. So I'd like to take you there now. Great. with Thad Phillips, one of the library services managers. Thad, Ron directed me over here because he said you have an immense reference collection. But what areas do you actually have in here? Some of the specific areas we have is the career section. We get lots of students and just general public who come in are looking for a job. So we have um, built a strong career section so that they can come in here and hopefully locate a job through our resources. Great. What other sections do you have? Other sections that we have is the law section, which people do research. They get a traffic ticket. They come in and they um, look up the law so that they can go fight it in court. Now, how about people that have to get into medical or legal situations? We have a large collection. We have the Harvard Business uh, the Harvard Medical Newsletter, we have the Mayo Clinic uh, Newsletter. In addition, we have uh, specific resources for people looking into medical problems. Thad, you've got a large collection of books here. Exactly what is in the stack you have? I tried to bring a sample of books that would let the public know what kind of books we have. One of the most popular is How to Do Your Own Divorce in California. Really? Uh, landlord Law books are very popular. This has to do with evictions and rights and responsibilities of mm -hmm. landlords. You mentioned that you have a career section. Um, I notice you have this one here. Do people have a, a way to look at maybe careers in other areas of the country? Yes, we subscribe to the Job Bank series, which features every major city in the United States. So people can come here, go to the career section, look for their specific city, and find out who the largest employers are. Also, in our business section, which is, I think, one of the largest at any public library in Orange County, they can come in and do research on the particular company so that they're prepared when they go to the interview. Great. The national ad search comes out each week, and patrons come in and look at the actual jobs. So they look for the jobs, they research the city, and in the business section, they research the company. Hmm. We get lots of requests for medical research. People go to the doctor and need information, so we're very sensitive about that issue. But Current Therapy is one of the books that I recommend to patrons so that they can come in and find out what the latest medical research is on their particular illness. The PDR, which is the physician's desk reference, is very popular. It gives you information about the prescription drugs, and um, patrons come in there and hmm. use it. One of the most popular research sources on Saturdays is consumer reports. People are going out shopping and they come in and we give them consumer reports and they're able to research the product and then go out and purchase it. Great. You know, you've got a lot of books here. Is there anything that maybe simplifies research and maybe doesn't make it as time consume, consuming as it could be? Certainly. Uh, more and more reference sources are coming out on CD-ROM products. Um, right now we have two products, uh, the Los Angeles Times and the Orange County Register, 
on CD-ROM. It's the full text. You can go and enter any search that you want. Say you're taking a trip to Washington, D.C. You put in Washington, D.C. and hotels, and that uh, CD-ROM will search those terms and find articles that are specific to the, what you're searching for. In the past, if you looked in a reader's guide to periodicals, you wouldn't be able to um, join those terms together. And so the computer allows us to combine word terms and search and, and narrow the search so that you find exactly what you want. So it's made the search a lot easier. That's great. In addition, we have InfoTrack stations, which index magazines. So we've tailored our subscriptions to what's indexed on the magazine index, InfoTrack. So students, the public, come in, type in any search they want, mm -hmm. and then they print out the citation and go to the periodicals department and obtain the magazine article. Now you've mentioned books and magazines. What about newspapers? Do you Newspapers those? are also indexed on the InfoTrack station. We have back issues not only on CD-ROM, we have them on microfilm. And recently, the Huntington Beach Historical Society donated back issues of the Huntington Beach Independent. That's great. Now, Thad, what about those people that are uh, working maybe during the day, can't make it into the library when it's open? I know that there is a modem number. The number is 842-0763, and they can dial that from home. But exactly what does that do? You can be at home, you can be at your office, and dial directly into our computer catalog. You can do keyword searching just as you can on the CD-ROM product. You can type any term in. For example, you could type in the word Steinbeck and do a search on all words and find all the books, the videotapes, anything dealing with um, the author Steinbeck. You can find criticism, so students can use that same search to find criticisms and do research. Unbelievable. It's, it's very, very it's, uh, amazing from what, how we used to do our researching. Huh. Now, you've got the reference library section here at the Huntington Beach Central Library. What about the branches? Do they have the same type of information? Well, they have smaller collections, but they do have reference um, resources there, and John Halverson would probably be better to introduce you to the branch system. Great. Thank you, Thad, for talking to us. Thank you for visiting us. In fact, let's go talk to Jan Halverson, one of the library services managers, about the branches. Jan, the central library is important, but I'm sure the branch libraries are as well. But what do they offer maybe a little bit different from the central library? Well, the branch libraries offer the convenience of a neighborhood library. Statistics show that most people use libraries if they're within three miles of their home. And most children like to go to the library right after school to help with their homework. Senior citizens that don't have transportation have, find it difficult to go to the central library. And so we have a lot of popular reading materials for the senior citizens, for adults. And we have a reference collection that's smaller than the center but we do have encyclopedias and other reference materials. We also have newspapers and periodicals. And we offer the personal touch of having a person in the neighborhood that knows the reading interests of the people that come and use the library. So if they know you like mysteries, they can put aside mysteries for you and give that personal touch. That's great. Jan, the Main Street Library is one of the larger branches. Does it offer any additional programs or information that maybe the other smaller branches don't? Yes, it does. It used to be the old central library before this facility was open in 1975. And it has, because it has extra space, we have a space upstairs that's used by the Episcopal Service Alliance to give vouchers to low-income persons for food and housing and utilities. Also, we have a legal, uh, legal aid society, and they offer free legal advice for low-income persons. We also have a Model United Nation program, which offers a research library for the local high school students to come and do research for their projects for school. We also offer art, uh, art displays, art shows on a monthly basis. Can the Main Street Library act as well uh, with the other branch libraries as the Central Library does in being able to return books and, and property? Yes. You can return books that are borrowed at any library, either libraries in Huntington Beach or any in the, uh, in the Orange County system at any of the branches, any of the branches or at center, and they'll be returned through courier. And um, 
That's that great. Now, literacy is such an important uh, problem for, you know, the United States. Is there anything that the Huntington Beach Library offers to the community in the forms of literacy? Yes, we also have a program here at the Central Library, and it's located downstairs in the Central Library, and we offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We have about two, 200 tutors, and we match up with individuals who, for some reason, have not learned how to read very well in school. We have a language lab that helps them practice their language skills using computers. And we hope that they will improve and be able to get better jobs and become more proficient in that's, everything they do. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Jan, for talking to us. We have seen so much in the library today and combined with the other show that we did here, I just cannot believe that the employees here at the library are able to do everything that is offered here. Well, they're so talented, uh, sometimes I think they can, but in reality they really can't. And in order for us to do all that we do, it is absolutely imperative that we have volunteers. And we have 10 library affiliated uh, uh, support groups and in, including the library board, Friends of the Library, Library Patrons Foundation, Friends of the Children's Library, Genealogy, Arts, Sister City. Uh, and so there's just every opportunity you can imagine. And if people are interested, they can call us at the library and we'd be very happy to uh, direct them in an area of their interest. Great. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us to the library. You have an unbelievable library. You should be so proud of it. Well, thank you very much. We are. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. This is Inside City Hall, and our guest today was Director of Library Services, Ron Hayden. I'm Jane Cameron. Thanks for watching.